and welcome to Build. I'm Sam Thompson and we are live in London. Now remember, if you are watching this live and you have any questions, then please feel free to tweet us at Build Series LDN or if you're watching this on Facebook, then just leave a comment below. Now, we are joined today by actor slash director, currently starring on ITV's Vera. Please put your hands together for Kelly Doughty. <laughs> Wow, he's good looking. <laughs> Kenny, welcome to Thank you Bill. very much. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Very well, mate. You are pulling off the glasses incredibly well. I can't see without them, so I kind of have to. <laughs> oh, really? Is <laughs> yeah. it that bad? I really am. If I took this off, it would be just a sea of blurred, kind of picturesque, beautiful people. Ah, you might need that. I might look better blurred, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. Now, Kenny, Series 9 has just wrapped, mm -hmm. which is pretty close to the wire, since Episode one's just come out. Yeah, we finished filming in November, um, Episode 4, and then we had to do a lot of post-production. Um, right up to Christmas, and then we, for the post-production team, it's quite close to get it all delivered just in time to get it aired. And what are you going to do to relax now? Um, once we've done all the press, and once Vera's finished, um, I will probably um, go back to doing hiking and just relaxing and catching up with friends. And oh, watch you love it. a good hike. I do, yeah. yeah, for Yorkshire, I love a hike, yeah. yeah I've climbed uh, Mount Kinabalu. In, uh, in Borneo, yeah, it's a, it's a big old I'm mountain. show off. I mean, I'm, I do the Lake District. It's like, I should check Just in. saying, <laughs> man. You know, if you want to have a hike off, then I'll go get my boots and my Osprey bag. <laughs> but it's a really, actually, it's a really worthwhile thing. You should all try it. Very, very good. Yeah, definitely. And uh, 8.9 million viewers on average for Series 8. You that did. Yeah, is it was monumental. extraordinary. Yeah, it really was. And it, it's such a joy to be a part of, you know, working with Brenda every day. And for Brenda, she's now done series, uh, nine series. This is my fifth. Um, and it just keeps, to, keeps getting better and better, like a vintage wine. But has that put much pressure on, on Series 9, seeing how good Series 8 is? Um, I don't think so. I mean, we we do what we have to do. You can't really think about how it's going to go down and what the success is. You can only do your job and hopefully, you know, deliver your characters in the script and you know be as authentic as you as you possibly can. If you start to worry about you're going to top the ratings from the previous year, I think you're in dangerous territory. And we are following DCI. There she is, DCI Vera Stanhope. And see, I always get it wrong. These DCIs, I don't really understand detective. What are they, detective? I'm a detective sergeant. Yeah. So the hierarchy is you've got a, a DCI, which is the detective chief inspector. Okay. And they are the SIO of an investigation, which is senior investigating officer. And um, ordinarily, you would then have a detective inspector, which is a DI, which we don't have. And then you have a detective sergeant and then detective constables. And you're Aidan Healy. Aidan Healy. Yeah. And can you t tell us a little bit about your character? You played him a lot now. Yeah, so I've done five years of him. He originally uh, donned from Yorkshire. And when we first introduced him uh, in my first series, he'd come from the firearms squad in Yorkshire. And he'd made a bit of a mistake on, on, on the job. And he was kind of suffering um, a bit of trauma from that. So he transferred to Northumberland to join uh, Vera Stanhope in the CID team. Um, and he's become, over the years, a very loyal... Um, sidekick to to Vera and a bit more confident and a bit more um, I mean he she she really does have a genius way of working things out which is very frustrating for Aiden but he's, he's just not quite he's there. just not <laughs> quite there it's like you know why can I not do that so he's gradually they formed a really lovely relationship where they kind of bounce off each other but what's really interesting about this year is that by the end um, of the series we do Anne Cleves's book the seagull which is Vera is based on all of Anne Cleves's books and in that particular episode, there's a lot of tension between Vera and Aiden um, because that case, and if you forget to read the book, is very personal to Vera because it's a cold case. And Aiden is incredibly frustrated about not being allowed in. Um, and it's the first time in five years that there's a real kind of genuine, passionate tension between them, which I really enjoy playing. But do you ever have tension with your character? Because you've been playing him since 2015. Mm. You must know him inside and out. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I mean, he's very different to me. He's a, a much more um, thoughtful. I, I talk a lot. I can talk, you know, for England. Just rub it on about things. And uh, what I've learned from him, him, it's, me, it's weird, isn't it? What I've learned from him, <laughs> that that's, that's weird. It's <laughs> like one of, those, one of those things we need to work out. Who was that? That's me. Um, but from Aiden, the character is that you can take time and be a bit more thoughtful and a bit more um, listening. Uh, watch this now. I'm going to listen. 
<laughs> just sit here. So he would be more like this. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, it's so pet the pensiveness. <laughs> the stare is so like you can go into your soul. But they have this thing which which I learned because I did a bit of a, a workshop with the police before I did the job. And one of the things that I learned, they do a thing called ABC, which is assume nothing, believe no one, check everything. So whenever you're in a kind of interview situation with a suspect, you might be as nice as pie and you kind of do that. And then you walk out and go guilty. You know, and it, what do you mean? We just need to find the evidence, but Sam's guilty, definitely. Oh, I am. <laughs> Depends what on. I mean, I did nick a pepperoni out of my sister's fridge. You yesterday. see, I knew it. You see, <laughs> starts to confess immediately. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> now, episode one has already aired. I've yep. watched it, by the way. It's really, really gripping. What is in store for episode two? What, I mean, without spoilers, obviously. We've got an episode two which is called Cuckoo, and it's uh, a slightly different territory for us. It, we're dealing with county lines, which is when you have drug dealers crossing county lines, and the story starts with a shocking disappearance of a teenage boy from a care home and then we find him further north of Newcastle and then find out that he's been exploited and we kind of takes us into a very dark world into a kind of um, county lines and drug world um, and there's some scenes which um, a little bit kind of train spotting esque in the sense of there, there, is, there are people that are addicted to drugs and then you see their home and what happens is cuckooing means that drug dealers take over these vulnerable people's homes to kind of deal and do this. So we're into this very kind of dark, raw world where teenagers are exploited and vulnerable people have been exploited. How do you um, find, like, do you speak to the police to find these sort of stories and and like because i didn't know that happened I, I didn't know that the writers do i mean the writers we have an amazing team of writers and they obviously go out there and research and find these stories and then once the story is presented to me and brenda we'll go off and research and go where did you find these but so we we get them once the the writer has you know has found a story we actually are very lucky by the way we have a clip of episode two before mm. it's coming out let's take a quick look <laughs> Is she as bossy as that in real life? No, not at all, not at all. You know, Brenda is, I, I think, an absolutely world-class actor, one of the best actors you know, on the planet that I've worked with, and it's such a joy to work with her. And she's so different from Vera. I mean, she is um, so much fun. I mean, incredibly hard-working and, and really genuinely every day at work is, is an inspiration to be with her, because she's such a high standard and metec meticulous detail to attention. Um, unlike my speech, <laughs> but um, you know, but no, she's not. I mean, she's she's not like Vera at all, really. And your character's so brilliant because they, like, even then, you're sitting on the bench and you're just about to tuck in, and there's an element of comedy in that. Isn't yeah, there? that yeah. you play off each other so well. And we, and, and we kind of, what's nice is I think the the writers have started to um, understand. Kenny and Brenda's dynamic, that we have a great time and we, we've learned how to find just a little bit of playfulness in the relationship. And so that uh, probably wasn't entirely scripted, the timing of it. Um, and we try and find just little moments like that, which Vera just reminds Aidan of her authority and can say, look, eat that on the way. And it's like every time he never gets to finish his sandwich or his coffee or, you know, doesn't quite get to deliver. That's who's done it. She says, I know who's done it. And you're like, oh, OK, all right. <laughs> And I, I need to ask you this, okay? I've, I've always wanted this. Does Brenda put the voice, the accent on? She, yeah, I mean, to her, her normal voice, because she's from Ramsgate, um, and so that, that accent is Vera's voice, it's Vera's accent. Um, and then, so, and she, she obviously played the part uh, for a few years now, so she can just go straight into Vera. Hello, dearie. Yeah, it's, ama <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing transformation. I mean, you know, we, we travel to work together, and there's Kenny and Brenda in the car, and then when we get on set, you put that hat and the Mac on and the accent, and I'm like, oh, Vera. And I, I become slightly like, oh, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> and she's, she's a mature leading lady. Yeah. And, you know, I, th I personally think that's brilliant. Is, yeah. is that essential to the show's success? I think so. I think that the, with the books and with, with Vera, what's really important is you've got a, a woman who essentially is in a man's world and she doesn't have any real male superior. So she's having to get young men and, 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 and older men in shape and in line. And anybody who tries to challenge her authority, you know, she doesn't stand up, you know, won't stand for it. Um, and I think it's really important to, to have that. Yeah, and, and certainly, you know, it's not somebody who's wearing, you know, designer clothes. I mean, it's, you know, it's amazing. You've got somebody who is 
more concerned about cracking crime than how she looks. The hat and the scarf just works, no, no. though, doesn't it? Come on. They started to sell those hats, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> Vera hat. No. Yeah, really. Yeah, actually. Know. It's become a sideline, yeah. I'm getting one. I'm not even joking. I will. I could rock one of those bad boys. <laughs> I, uh, do you guys... Do you get much chance to hang off screen? Because obviously there is a huge age gap and, you know, she's probably got a family to get to, as do you. Yeah. Like, do you get much chill we, time or is it strictly work? We spend nearly 24 hours together. It's like the there old couple. Yeah, we do. I mean, because we work 15 hours a day and we will, once we finish filming, we have, when we're filming, we have an apartment next to each other. So quite often we go down and cook dinner for each other, maybe watch a bit of TV to unwind, but then learn lines for the next day. So your work doesn't actually stop when you finish filming. You've got to learn the next day's workload. So we'll go through the script and do that. And then when we get a chance, if we get a chance, we might do a quiz or go to the theater or you know whatever we can take in where we are. Like this episode is filled in Amble, which is a beautiful part of Northumberland. Um, so we, would, we tried to go and explore the local fish and chip shop after we finished filming. That was our treat. Well, talking about beauty, actually, some of the locations that are shot in this are so beautiful. Mm. Is there a lot of location work done? Yeah, I mean, the location department are extraordinary. I mean, we've done nine years of Vera, and they still managed to find places that were not shot in before. But I think it's credit to the Northeast and Northumberland that that whole coastline, it's absolutely, genuinely stunning. And you can be on the coast, which is untouched beaches, or a city centre, or if you go further inland, you've got really beautiful moors and kind of derelict landscape, which is you know great for hiking and you know doing all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the, the location department, they're brilliant. And actually segueing on to uh, the north, mm -hmm. you know what's coming now. I win. <laughs> you know what's going <laughs> right now. Okay, we've got a little game, okay? It's called Guess the Northern Phrase. Here we go. Uh, it's most set up... Uh, North, North people, I won't know what any of this means, okay? But uh, we, we, we're going to put you to the test here to see how northern you really are. <laughs> First up, okay, we've got a word. This, I don't even, this is gobbledygook to me, but put wood in it all, love. Put wood in it all, love. Uh, come on. <laughs> you said it so quickly. Hey, come on, you know what I'm talking about. We can do this all day if I want. All right, well, <laughs> okay. And what does that mean? We can do this all day if you want. See, uh, Barnes has got a very specific um, dialect, which is different to, like, Leeds and Sheffield. Do you, do you know what's funny? On here, and I'm sure it's going to come up just there, it says, close the door, love. <laughs> <laughs> we got that completely wrong. But you could say that would be close door, love. Ah. We were going to do that, so, yeah. Producers, we are so very disappointed in you. <laughs> You're showing me up, man, in front of my friends. <laughs> the next one is, uh, nice, nice trabs, mate. Nice trabs, mate. Yes. See that one? I know, don't know. It's a trick one. Trabs. Oh, it's a good one. What's trabs? Nice, nice shoes, mate. Nice shoes, mate. Wow, no, that's a new one on me. Uh, we would say nice boots. Boots? Ah, but nice pair of boots you've got on. They are a nice pair of boots, <laughs> aren't they? These are the new Nike blazers. Don't worry about that. Uh, number three, okay. Ah, I need to go to the Aussie. I need to go to the Aussie. It must be the toilet, right? It's not. It's not. It's what? not. It's in fact. Oh, I need to go to, to the to hospital. Aussie, of course, it's Aussie. Ah, I need to go to Aussie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've got that. And uh, well, actually, you know, we actually have more, but I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stop this because it's killing me not being able to say them. What, what's next in store for you? Well, once we finish, a um, bit more press for Vera, um, then I will probably have a bit of time off, go, go back to a bit of hiking and catch up with friends. I mean, we, we film for six months and then we do the press until it starts and then finishes. So it's about nine months in total that we're kind of occupied by Vera. But in terms of a career, you know, I heard that you are actually a director as well. I directed, yeah, I directed a short film a few years ago, which I loved. Um, and it's something that I'm still keen to kind of get back into. It's hard. It's really hard. I have so much respect for directors. I mean, it's hard to find the right project and get it made and to kind of get the, you know, the finance for it. I mean, independent film is really, really difficult. And, and look, it's obviously a very hard question to answer, but if you could, if you had to veer off into one of them, acting mm -hmm. or directing, what would you rather do? What's your biggest passion? Uh, hiking. 
<laughs> I don't know. I think they're both such different disciplines. I mean, I love playing. Um, you know, being an actor, it's a playground, and you get the opportunity to improvise and have fun. And and as a director, it's a different part of the brain. You've kind of when, when you're doing your pre-production, you've got to imagine what it is that you want. And then when you shoot, it's about collecting what you want, but being adaptable to be able to take and, and move with things, performances, and and then you've got the post-production. So it's different parts of the brain. Um, you know, so it, it, I don't think you could say it's either or. I think if you can combine both, then you, you really are in a good place. Do you ever put yourself in your own film? Never. <laughs> I really wouldn't because I think it's really confusing. I think it's confusing for for the reason why you're doing it. And also, I, th I think I would always like to retain a sense of objectivity about the work. And if you're in it, I'm, I'm, I need, as an actor, I need to be directed. So I, I wouldn't be able to direct myself. And, you know, you're doing a, you know, you do a scene and you go, okay, yeah, so... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm really good, man. I'm really good. Cut. That's me. Cut. Yeah. God Cut. damn it, Cut. Kenny. But it's, you know, there's a, oh, there's a quick, quick, quick story, and we've got time. Years and years ago, I did um, a film called Titus with Anthony Hopkins, and that day the director um, wasn't wasn't there. I think I can't remember why for whatever reason. So he had to direct himself, and he he did this thing. Okay, lights. Yes, that's right. Camera, action. Oh, that's me. Right. <laughs> and he, then he went into the speech, and he went, okay, and he did the brilliant Shakespeare speech, and then called cut. And he went, oh yes, that's me. Cut. Stop. And it was this really weird, surreal thing of him directing himself and the camera. And I, I said, that's, I, I couldn't do it. It's too confusing. Would they ever let you direct an episode of Vera? Um, again, I think that I, again, I don't think I'd be objective enough to, to do it. Do you know what was lovely though? We had um, last year a lovely uh, David Leon, who was the sidekick before me, and he came back and directed an episode. Um, and it was really lovely for him to come back because he knows the show inside out and he did a, a fantastic job and he had a different take on it because he'd been part of the world as, as an actor and, and as a sidekick and then came to it as a director. So I think with that time and space, I think it's a good, a good thing to do, but not while you're in it. Well, I suppose we need to ask them to kill you off then, so you can come <laughs> back <laughs> as a director. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, it's been so great talking to you, Thanks, and I, it's gone so quickly. That, unfortunately, is all we have time for, and that makes you quite sad. But it's on on Sunday at 8, it's 8 10, actually, 10 PM. past 8. Yeah, 10 past 8, which is a different time than normal, but it is on Sunday. At Sunday, 10 ITV, 8 10 PM. Yep. And please do tune in. I will be watching. Please put your hands together one last time for Kenny Doughty. Thank you. Thanks, Sam.